He talks, turning a sun-stained cheek to me, his mouth a dark cavern where stalactites of uneven teeth gleam. He in the poem is the man persona and me is the woman persona. In the first four lines of the poem, the writer is describing the physical nature of her partner. The beginning phrase, he talks, is a sign of patriarchal structure where the woman is silenced because he alone is talking here. Then she has given a detailed description of her husband. The husband is not like the lover fairy tale. He is rather repulsive to her. He had a brown skin and his mouth was likened to a dark cave. His uneven teeth were hanging like thin pieces of rock usually seen in the entrance of a cave. These details are given to show the woman's disgust with the man. His right hand on my knee while our minds are willed to race towards love, but they only wander, tripping idly over puddles of desire. The man puts his hand on her knee. It is, of course, a beginning gesture of lovemaking. Though they wanted to make love to each other, they simply can't do so. Their minds wander away. The phrase, Puddles of desire denotes that the loves are smitten by the arrows of love, but their love is full of dirt and filth and not pure and emotional. The poetess says that if there is no meeting point for the two hearts, the mind will definitely go astray. She seems to be tied to him socially, though personally she does not like him. Kamala Das, in this poem, expresses her idea against arranged marriages that are usually inspired by parents' conveniences more than those of the couples. The poet paints a hateful picture of a man with whom she has to enter into sexual intercourse regardless of satisfaction. In such a situation, no partner feels happy and jovial except for physical contact. It offers no emotional contact between the man and the woman. Can this man with nimble fingertips unleash nothing more alive than this skin's lazy hungers? Who can help us who have lived so long and have failed in love? The heart an empty cistern, waiting through the long hours, fills itself with coiling snakes of silence. The poet wonders whether her husband loves her passionately as he is moving his fingers rapidly over her skin. This rapid movement of fingers denotes lust and not love. She prefers a slow movement which has the emotional warmth and to passion. Skin's lazy hungers denotes bodily pleasures. The man is only worried about his physical needs. The shallowness of his nature hurts her emotion. She addresses her husband as this man because of the lack of intimacy in their relationship. She asks disappointedly whether anybody can help these couple who lived a long life without love. Her heart is likened to an empty tank waiting for the true love. But unfortunately it is filled with an inescapable silence. The phrase coiling snakes of silence may suggest the oppressive nature of silence after love making. I am a freak. It's only to save my face. I flaunt at times a grand flamboyant lust. In these lines she calls herself a freak 
and admits that her lust is a defense mechanism for survival, a cover from being called an unworthy woman. In order to save the awkward situation, she displays her lust in a grand and lively manner. By calling herself a freak, she has created her unique, different world of freaks with a few independent-minded women like her living in this world. Though the husband is sexually passionate, he remains passive in the sex game. He behaves abnormally and therefore he too is a freak. Possibly her sexual hunger remains unfulfilled. Her deep sense of personal agony and despair are exposed in these lines. The female persona enters the sex cosmos to realize herself and to be united with the male in order to have a place in his heart. She wishes to have a feeling of oneness with her male lover. But while her body is in sexual act, her whole being remain aloof in absence of the nourishment of her feeling and emotions. Perhaps it is this disillusionment which is the offshoot of the sex act makes her a freak. In this poem, the poet or the poetess searches for true relation and the quest is for an emotional relationship with her lover. She expresses her grief for lack of sexual passions. There is only hunger without feeling of understanding. The male anatomy furnishes here with images of horror and ugliness. It is represented as repulsive and destructive. Images of ugliness here focus on her attitude of rejection and negation. It is symbolic of her revolt against the male ego and the male dominated world. It's obvious that her relationship with her husband is a forced one. There is no love between the two. And the woman is there only because as a wife she must submit herself to the lust of her husband. Thank you.